Well, that was uh, drive angry, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it? it, it it what was a better. Angry. It was a better movie than what Drive Angry should have been. No, that was actually uh, that was Baby Driver. Baby um, Driver, yeah. mm. which I thought was the worst kind of golf club possible, but uh, <laughs> I had to get that out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Edgar Wright. Um, glad to have you back. I was gonna do it like a baseball, but it actually would be more like a putt. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Edgar Wright. Glad to have you back. Um, your last movie, I believe your last movie was still uh, The World's End, I believe, uh, I, if memory serves me. And that was kind of a letdown as compared to the rest of the Cornetto trilogy. Uh, but here, uh, it's nice to see him come back into mostly form and and uh, perpetrate, <clears throat> perpetrate, perpetuate his style of movie making, which I find to be engrossing and infuriating at the exact same time. Mm. Ah, so we are. Ah, I thought you were going to just be all in, but actually we're both on the same page again. Yeah, well, engrossing and infuriating at the exact same time. And infuriating, all right, I'll, I'll say engrossing because he makes a movie the way, like, an artisanal craftsman builds his, like, his chair or his, draws his, or paints his painting mm -hmm. or uh, a composer composes his music. It's, you know, intricate. It is very much hard into the details. But at the exact same time, you notice that, and that takes you out of the movie a lot. Mm, so. so a lot of meta, a lot of meta jokes, a lot of um, meta themes, and it's hard not to notice. And when you notice it, you're supposed to feel like, oh, you're you know you're getting involved with the movie. But I'm not. When that's happening, I'm not necessarily jiving with what's happening in the story. Sure. So, I don't know if I agree with that. Like you don't agree. You don't agree with what how agree I with? Like, a, like like that when I I agree with you on those those bits being very very noticeable. But it did not take me out of the movie. In fact, it made it so much more enjoyable for me. Oh, I mean like that. I mean like I can see that. Like how you uh, enjoy a movie is different for everyone. And I do like the I like I do like being challenged in the movie. But I don't necessarily mm. like being distracted from what's happening in the movie. But this one in particular struck me in a way that I was not expecting, and I gotta get this out. Um, when you mentioned music, those visual cues, to me, mm -hmm. were akin to seeing sheet music. It did not go, oh, you know, hey, do you get it? Do you get it? But it was like, oh, fuck, here we go. It's seeing the next bar measure and going, okay, we're going into a new tempo now. This film, I shit you not, is choreographed. Well, you know, like most movies are choreographed. Yeah. From but no, she but this she this movie is choreographed to a very very specific tempo. Every scene that there's action going on, uh, every every turn of the steering wheel, every blink of a character's eye, um, every turn signal going on, every extra walking past the screen is to a tempo. It is so tightly controlled that to me this film was akin to my first time playing Dark Souls. And the thing about Dark Souls is that the game itself, every battle, every boss is on a tempo. You don't notice it right away, but every attack pattern it's on 4-4 four, four time. Except one boss, but that's in the third game. <laughs> so basically you could like play the piano to this movie. Exactly. Just it's a metronome. And everything, everything, visual, audio, action, tone, dialogue even, is to this tempo. <clears throat> and it was fucking unreal. So unreal. And I loved every second of it. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, that's, I'm not saying that that's not impressive and that's not something wonderful to behold. But when I'm thinking about stuff like that, especially, mm -hmm. is, I'm thinking about, when I'm thinking about that, it's like, the, 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 the actual story part of the movie is losing me because yep. that's taking a lot of the mental process out of the. You could you could that's say that um, Moulin Rouge was very well choreographed. You, well, well choreographed, well edited, well shot. But when you look at anything beyond the, the aesthetics of it, holy shit, that's a bad movie. <laughs> well, not to, not, again, to, not to say this was a bad movie. But like this is I, not. This I, is I nowhere near I, that I, level. Sorry. I don't agree with the Moulin Rouge thing because. With Moulin Rouge, yeah, it was literally choreographed, but you didn't see uncontrollable, seemingly chaotic things happening 
to the tempo of the songs in the movie. No, it didn't work like that. People were doing dance numbers, yeah, but you wouldn't see like a bird fly across the sky with its wings going in the beat of the song that was playing in the background. Shit like that that you think wouldn't be controllable. Like, watching the plethora of car accidents in this were also set to that same tempo. The editing in this movie is fucking brilliant because of that. Yeah, like... It, you don't there, get that shit in Moulin Rouge. Oh, I, I, just, I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Moulin Rouge is just yeah, a really no. bad movie. Maybe, well, this is not. And I'm kind, I, I kind of hate you a little bit for trying to compare the two. Well, I went to an extreme. <laughs> went to the extreme, but from that... Per, from that uh, but from that angle of purposeful editing, not necessarily for uh, visual comprehension, but rather for uh, an ulterior motive. Because when you think about editing, you're thinking about how uh, how shots correlate to one another to create a visual story. In uh, your typical movie, shot, reverse shot for conversation, for instance, is just there because the movie wants the audience to know who is talking, when they are talking, and how the person they're talking to is responding to it. And there's usually an ebb and flow to a conversation, like there, uh, ebb and flow to the shots, rather, just like there's an ebb and flow into conversation. Whereas with um, this movie in particular, since the main character, Baby, you know, which we'll, we'll get to him, we'll get to him, but I know, I know you're brimming, I know you're brimming. But, but when Baby is, it's set up that he has, he, he listens to music to drown out his tinnitus. And so everything, he, when you're just him, when it's just him, you're experiencing the world how he sees it. And how he sees it is how he hears it. So you're, like, when he's dancing along to the music, all of a sudden, like, he's minding a saxophone, and then there's a saxophone just graffitied into the background on the wall behind him. You see graffiti of the lyrics of the song he's listening to in the foreground on lampposts, which is a very Edgar Wright thing to do. And the, while that, again, I come back to, technically impressive, and it, and it requires a mindfulness, a mindfulness to movie making that is sorely missed today, but it's in the effort of something that I wish, I wish amounted to more than just like, hey, isn't that neat? Some of it reminded me of um, Chris Pratt and Guardians at the beginning, just a little bit. Yeah, especially because you didn't quite know the character very hey, well. Hey, hey. You know, like, he, he's definitely, like, you, you had him pegged as this, you know, impetuous little shit that's only wrapped up in himself, but then as the movie goes on... You find out that's more true. <laughs> oh, I, I fell in love with, with the character. Um... um. What was the actor's name again? Oh, Ansel something. Like Edsel something. Hansel. Edsel and yeah, like he had one of those unpronounceable Hollywood names that is becoming more and more obnoxiously frequent as the day goes by. So, uh, from from my point of view, he the actor was great. Uh, he's got a great career ahead he, of him if he oh keeps on, you know. He ma he made this movie. He really did make it. Yeah, for me. definitely. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, he the writing is. Uh, God, this is, you know, bringing up the story. Um, mm -hmm. He's uh, not the greatest guy. He really isn't. He, like, he cares for a person who is deaf. Uh, because not that's just his, any person. It's his foster his father. His stepfather. He, like his foster his, father. Sorry, foster father. Uh, he cares for who is deaf and everything. You know, he's really cool to him. I mean, other than the fact that he's hiding money in his house <laughs> under his floorboards <laughs> right in front of him when he can see it and... Yeah, um, but <laughs> see, there's just there's like these linings, and, and, and the fact that he, he puts his girl, his new love interest, in harm's way constantly, despite the plot trying to make the, well, basically saying he's trying to protect her, while constantly driving around with her about to, you know, with the possibility of like murdering her, like in a you know like death proof kind of way, <laughs> like. You mean like uh, just going in like every dangerous... single turn he takes, and we've we've seen that he's not perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, like his not. emotions can cause him to mess up. So he's like a teenager, of course. Yeah, he's seemingly a teenager. It's never really revealed how old he is, but I mean, it's yeah, not like he's a I'd superhero, and his power is that he's like the most safe person in the world when he's driving. Well, I mean. I, I'm willing to kind of let that part of his character because go. it is an action film. They need to have some. Fun. Yeah. yeah, like how like how much do you really care about this new lady love if you're constantly making like J turns with you know? <laughs> but they had to have it because cool. This it is was cool. This it is was. this is a post Fate and the Furious world we live in. So every car mm -hmm. has to have a brake turn. Every yeah. single one. 
now you know, like humanity like the the ability to procreate is now dependent upon a man's ability to do a three-point turn at 45 miles per hour i didn't see that car fly at all i know zero if I fly i mean like actually glide <laughs> minus five yeah. stars yeah <laughs> But my like my reticence with the story has less to do with the character and more to do with the actual story being mm -hmm. told. It's the classic "I'm in too deep" story. Yeah, you know, like kid gets on gets in way over his head because he has a talent, and you know he tries to get out. No, no real <clears throat> twists, no real turns. Mm -hmm. You know, it pretty much plays it straight all the way up. Mm -hmm. eh. It, eh. I will I will say whenever I thought, oh here we go, this is gonna be so predictable, it did surprise me. It did, oh. There were there were enough. I mean, yeah, a lot of the plot points were predictable, but there were enough spins on that prediction to make it really, really interesting. And I was on the edge of my seat. Not well, tail spins, but like actual actual yeah. spins. But my well, my well, spins. Uh, uh, well, you know, when you follow when when you well, the problem with the predictability is when you when you notice the color color theory that the movie was using, you just like, oh great, now I know who's gonna die. Hmm. Yeah, it's like, as soon as I told you, right at the beginning of the movie, he's like, look for the color red. And Jamie Foxx, all he does is wear red in the movie. Like, don't give, don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are, we no. are we doing spoiler things? I, no. think, I think at this point it's too, it's too late. Spoilers. No! <laughs> yeah. Duh, bacon, damn it, no, okay. Seriously, <laughs> like, I love this movie, and if you don't want it spoiled, I seriously mm. would stop watching right okay now. here's I, the, I, I know i know you two yeah. you can't we love to ruin people's we, dreams and yeah and shit on their experiences but if, like on a general recommendation without a more in-depth conversation with what's going on uh yeah i do recommend it i think it's a very, very oh, unique yeah. movie oh yeah. oh yeah oh yeah and it's a it's a wholly unique movie and as an experience i say yeah go see it in theaters it's uh yeah. as an action movie it has all it has everything you'd want <clears throat> even as a comedy even though it's not gut bustingly funny i think it's Clever enough that you will at least appreciate the attempt at the humor. Yeah, maybe bring earplugs depending it, it on where you're going. It is an experience for sure. And again, if you are into music theory, or you are sensitive to patterns like that, like much like the main character is so sensitive to his music, it you have to go see this movie. You owe it to yourself for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, so now that uh, spoiler warnings are out of the way, that is one of the like that's where I find Edgar Wright's filmmaking to be obnoxious. Because of his adherence to color theory, it's basically spoiling the movie for me. Mm. So, like, now you know exactly who is going to die, how they're going to die. Yeah, but I kind of thought that's what was going to happen the instant they got into that car. Yeah, and exactly, when they go into the car. But then you, like, then you see, like, the rebar being used to kill Jamie Foxx tied with a red bow. And it's like, mm -hmm. we already knew that was going to happen. It's just... I knew he was going to ram themselves, but I thought he was going to try to kill himself, too. No. Nah, I thought that was going to happen. Not with the rebar placed the way it was. I actually thought that when he did that, that it was going to go through him and impale uh, his, uh, what's his name? Yeah, from I Mad thought Men. it was going to John happen. Was, John he was going to kill them all, and then the big boss at the end was going to be uh, Kevin Spacey. Now, so... That's not how I thought it was going to go. I thought it was just going to impale... Uh... I, I thought for sure he'd be the final hmm. boss. No, like, no, because it's Kevin Spacey. He's not mm. He's not an action star. I was sure... I mean, it no, ended up being the same way. He makes a badass villain, though. He'd make a badass villain, but not necessarily a final battle thing. So, I... spe okay, speaking of... What the fuck was up with that? What the fuck was up with... Yeah, uh... Kevin Spacey. Oh. Like... I loved him so much, and it's just, I just felt like he was so wasted by the end. I will admit. He there got wasted all right. That did oh, he... piss me off. <laughs> Yeah, wasted GTA style. <laughs> oh, beyond! That was so <laughs> and then he satisfying. gets wasted, and then he gets rolled over again. Yeah, they, they, no, they pulled a fucking me, Joe Black. I I <laughs> see her like out of the corner of my eye. I go, oh, like Kevin Spacey. I'm just like, oh, she really did it. She really wasn't ready for him to go yet. And then they <laughs> not roll. Like, not and then like they, this. Then they go and shift into not care. Not like. And they roll over his head and it squashes like a pumpkin. Not like, like this. Insult to injury, definitely. <laughs> but the, that is that is the one thing that stuck me a lot was the ending. I'm not, I'm not sure if I love or hate the ending of this film. I'm. It's one of those two extremes for sure. But I seriously can't decide which one yet. I think it was appropriate. 
I think for what you the think mo- so? yeah, I do because on one hand, like you'd want to have that true romance <laughs> ending where they got away and now they're living happily ever. If they had ended it one scene prior when he got the letter and there was that hope and they cut to black when he had that small smirk on his face reading it. I thought that would have been brilliant. You mean sort of like a... Well, like that was sort of the ending to uh, Shawshank Redemption. Like where uh, he... The original ending was that Shawshank... In Shawshank was... Um, uh, Morgan Freeman was talking about like, I hope to see my... Uh, I hope to see Andy Dufresne soon. I hope. And he's on the bus and that's where it ends. Really? There was, yeah. That's, that was the original ending? That was the original ending. But test audiences wanted to see them actually reunite. They wanted to see reunite. Yeah. So they shot the scene on the beach where... Well, Though, to be fair, Shawshank Redemption is a much different movie than this. Much different it's movie. A dumb, it's a much different movie, but it is a movie that where the main yes. character is just put through the shit. Yeah. Oh, he, yes. And I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, you want that confirmation that, you know, when you've been trial by fired, as hard as this you've character... You've been trial by fired. <laughs> as you've been, yeah, yeah. like, as, as he so eloquently put, as, as you... <laughs> Once you've been put through that kind of ringer, you want that emotional resonance. You want yeah. that, you know. That's fair. That's fair. And I, in this movie, more than anything, like the right people lived. Yeah, I the only swerve I thought I saw I thought I was going to see coming. Yeah, the only swerve I thought I was going to see coming was uh, his step his foster father was going to bite it. And there was that moment. There was that moment where he's just collapsed and collapsed, and you're thinking. Oh no, he's you know he's dead, but no, he's just napping, I guess. Like oh, and he's probably knocked out. I mean, he couldn't move. Yeah, you know, well, he was knocked out, but he's also wheelchair bound. So yeah. Mm. So what that, the fuck could he do? But then just I knew that it. they took his wheelchair, so I kind of put it together right the last second. Mm. Oh yeah. But that's well, why yeah, I, I but thought, there's a there's I no, thought, yeah. for sure he there's no blood stipulation from oh. his head though. There's no visible wounds, so it's just like he got pushed over and he got knocked out, I guess? And... Again, I wasn't sure water. because yeah. of the two blood spots on Baby's shirt. Again, with that motif, I thought for sure something bad was going to happen mm-hmm. um, to the girlfriend and the foster father because two dots <gasps> So over they his, did over put one over us. I, I thought for sure that's what was going to happen because there were, again, it was obvious, but I thought for sure they were going to do something with that, go in that direction, but they didn't. No, so they, so did, they did they surprise did. you, even with these obvious yeah. tells. They still find a way to fuck with you and screw with your expectations, and I I respect that. A I lot. like it wouldn't have made much sense to me if they had killed him off at that point. So, like the one thing about Edgar Wright is that he never really made a movie with a downer ending. Like every ending, like he had, mm-hmm. fit the movie from a happy perspective. Even or Shaun of the least, Dead, yeah. Even Shaun of the Dead, which had a zombie apocalypse. Was all right by the end of the movie. Well, I mean, they were okay with it. I mean, and therefore we were. <laughs> well, it's not that they were ju- they were just okay with it. Like, no, they were fine. Like they were fine, but like now well, they. It could be that way every movie. Yeah, like now, like now the pe- apparently the the zombies are now just a part of a task force and workforce. So like even yeah. the rest of the world now has like this cheap labor source. <laughs> so like as as far as I'm concerned, Edgar Wright loves his happy endings, or at least finding a happy ending in the middle of utter chaos. Yeah. Here's so, what yeah. pissed me Which off. Is... Oh, oh, we, oh, we <laughs> this is what pissed me off the most about the movie. Oh, here we go. Was Kevin Spacey's decision at the end to, yeah. help, to help them. That, that's, that's what kind of he, struck me, too. He is so <laughs> dead. He, yeah. he is so dead set in not helping Baby after being, you know, basically betrayed by his point of view, at least. Um, but that, how would he know that, necessarily? Like, I, I, I wouldn't yeah. think Kevin Spacey would have known that. He, but the, the point is, like, he is so not going to help him. Mm-hmm. And, and he's an asshole. There's nothing else. To, like he, he threatened th- to break his leg so he couldn't, like, you know, drive or anything else ever again. And to, like, cut up his girlfriend mm-hmm. and murder everybody he knows, Kaiser Sose style. The whole, you know, the mm-hmm. whole package. He clearly doesn't give a shit about, you know, he's not, like, sentimental, really, except until now. So he sees, he's like, I'm not going to help you. Get the fuck out. He's the biggest piece of shit ever. And then his girlfriend comes in and he sees that and immediately is like, oh, fuck you, my one weakness. I have to help you now. I think it was more than because he knew damn well what he had just been through. And I think he assumed that she had seen the entire thing. And the fact that she was still there, I think, meant something. He was going to cut her face up so she wasn't pretty ever again. Yeah, yeah, like that—that was bullshit. But it was also very much in style. 
with the body of work that we're used to. What if all this time he was actually bluffing and he wasn't going to do any of those things? And he was just like Maybe a really good Maybe he wasn't. Bluff. Maybe that's what it was. He clearly he... had sentimental feelings for Baby. Like, know. yeah, like he, he honored the deal, basically, saying like... Well... As, as, well, as, as well as he could. The thing mm -hmm. is, he 360'd so fast. Like, he didn't just like say, here's your money, get off, fine, you, you got me with that. He was like, I'm going to bat for you, man. Yeah, he, w he, I'm he, your he bro. sacrificed his life. Yeah. On the turn of a dime. He wasn't this even This guy gonna... who was so powerful yeah. to buy out the entire fucking police force of Atlanta fucking Georgia is willing to die for this fucking kid who just screwed him over in every single conceivable way. You see what you it see what does. it does. You, like, you see what I mean about like how a movie that is so intricately made can distract you away from like the story aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And that is I do. Yeah, that is just But I still thoroughly fucking love this movie. Oh, well, it's an impressive movie, oh. but that's where like I I think I come down on the movie as like I admire this movie more than I like it. Mm. And one could say that like a movie doesn't necessarily have putting it. Right? You know, like yeah. like uh, you could say that this movie is um you could say that a movie doesn't necessarily have to have a good strong story in order for it to be a good movie and you're totally right on that regard. But at the exact same time, like if you're, people. <laughs> like a movie could be about like a movie could be about a, a visual experience, it could be about uh <laughs> I'm I'm Did guess that... <laughs> funny pun. Like, did you try to watch Cat People once, too? <laughs> I tried! Oh my god! Give me, give me a, give me a... I, can, I can do it! No! 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 <laughs> it's a good movie! <laughs> <laughs> no, Amy! No! I, no. I, I love cringe humor, but I have a limit. Don't you just love the part of the movie where the that guy that girl's brother kept trying to get her to fuck him? Over and over Can we and stay focused. That please? movie was just one It was the visuals and it was the soundtrack that made that movie. Focused. It was Damn. the visuals and the soundtrack. If David Bowie wasn't on that soundtrack, that movie would have been buried six feet under for you emotionally. Like the soundtrack. Okay, 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 honesty time. It's the first movie that I apparently ever saw. <laughs> That really explains a lot about you now that I... Or at least, <laughs> uh, at least parts of it, so... Like, apparently my, uh, my first movie was Miss Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire, rather. So, like, that's the difference between you and me. My first movie in theaters... Was that really your first theater experience? Yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire. Nice. Mine was Aladdin. Yeah, and huh. yours was Cat People. Cat People. <laughs> your mother and father had a very broad sense of what's applicable or rather appropriate uh, for a three-year-old. I guess everybody gets it now. <laughs> so uh, just, just tip, you know, future yeah. parents out there, don't take your kid to see that movie for their first movie. <laughs> so many other better choices. <laughs> could, could, so many. Could be worse. I mean, like, granted, you are right, Gabe. There could be worse. Like the Secret Lights, Life of Pets, or the Book of Life. The this, this oh. Secret Lights of Pets. <laughs> I can't even say that name. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Name. It's because he's too broken for being. Well, okay, at least the book of life was pretty. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, just, okay, that, that's that's fine as long as they don't get the message part. Yeah, like I showed. Wait, I showed, wait, wait. So off topic. No, no, no. It just hit me is that there are children out there. There have to be just by the law of averages, whose first movie going experience was either Oogie Loves or movie forty two. Forty three. Forty three. Oh. There has to be at least one child out there whose parents were so just Inept. absolutely worthless to go take their child to see movie 43 as their first theater experience that they will remember for the rest of their lives. And saw the whole, like went through the whole thing. They never at any point decided we need to leave. Like maybe they saw that movie for themselves and they just had to bring their kid along, I suppose. Well, I mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember, I, I don't, now that I really think, I don't know if that was my first movie experience, but one of my earliest memories was my mother going to take me to see 1492. Oh, you mean the, uh, the Gerard <laughs> Depardieu movie? <laughs> ah! Because she legit thought it was going to be an educational experience. Ah. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it, it's not a bad movie, it's just, I would uh, imagine you would just be bored with it. I I think I was like six or seven when that thing came out. Wait, is out. that the one with uh, Frank Donald? 
Oh, I'm, I'm Is sorry. Donald Sutherland in it? I don't remember. I, I don't remember. I just remember Gerard Depardieu played Christopher Columbus. Yeah, and it was a okay. fucking bloodbath. Oh, uh, okay. uh, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> we walked out, and I'm just like, what part of you thought this was a good idea? <laughs> I'm sorry, focus. Yeah, focus. focus. <laughs> yeah, it's focus. But I keep coming back to the idea mm -hmm. that Edgar Wright makes interesting movies, and once he made a legit, enjoyably fun movie with me with Hot Fuzz. I think Hot Fuzz is... He that was a great. Like he it was will, good. I, I like Shaun of the Dead better, though. Like Hot Fuzz will be, by far and away, the, his, the best movie he will ever make. I'll have to see them again, because it's been a while, but I, I recall oh, Shaun of the Dead being the best. Mm -hmm. And, like, what really kind of took away from the, what the... As far as the enjoyment is concerned, what took that away from this movie was that he directed this movie and he wrote this movie, but it doesn't necessarily feel like an Edgar Wright script. No, really, I never would have guessed him in a million years. Yeah, because, well, I, part I, of that had to do with I the would. part of that had to do with the musical theme, because when you have so many uh, scenes dedicated to your main character dancing around and chucking and jiving to the music in his ears, there's not a lot of dialogue. On, there's not a lot of dialogue. I don't know. I mean, all of his movies have very much a musical pacing to them. There's a musical pacing, but there's at least, you know, back and forth, almost constantly. There's hardly that a scene. True. There's that hardly a true. scene that goes by in an Edgar Wright movie outside of an action scene that there isn't some kind of dialogue going back and forth. But there's entire stretches of this movie where nothing is really said. And I thought that was actually kind of bold of him to try and do because mm -hmm. he's very much a language director. I mean, that comes from being a writer and a director. But there, there was a language, though. It's just there, not one lot of people it's not would verbal, be able to pick up on. But know? it was, it's not a verbal language. <laughs> We're saying with the, you know, the one that had sign language. And oh, yeah. Like, that, that was a... I, I have to admit, that was a bold decision on his part, I think. I loved it. Yeah. I uh, loved it. That was, again, an interesting decision, but not necessarily, like, I love this movie because of it. <laughs> it's, like, Edgar Wright, as a director and a creator, is always on the precipice of being a great director with me, but he keeps making these creative decisions that while I respect mm -hmm. and while I see the method to it, doesn't really resonate with me. Okay. It and resonates that's, plenty with me. And, and, the, and that's your prerogative, and as well as it's my prerogative, to be kind of frustrated with that. I wish I could like his movies more on the whole, yeah. because I don't want to be that guy who says, yeah, that was a great movie, but I just don't really like it. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be that guy. Nobody wants to feel like this half-ass... You're always that guy. I, I know, I don't want to. She's got a point. Like, I, I, I know you got a point. And that's, like, I wish I could enjoy a movie both intellectually and, and emotionally all the time. Because... Do you? Yes, I do. Oh, I, I recall you loved the shit out of 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, yeah. And, the, like, those are very rare and far in between. We see, on, mm -hmm. on average, like, 50 new movies a year. That's true. That's true. I, I will give you that. I don't yeah. exactly have... There are a some movies you will go into you to wanting. compare it against, but yeah. I like to think that even if I did, I'd still love the fuck out of this movie because I absolutely did. Mm -hmm. it, it is one of the best movies, though. I'm not sure I want to see again because of how draining it was. It was, it was an experience for sure, and it, I left the theater very drained and dead silent. All of us were. Yeah, I was pretty introverted silent. after the movie. I don't know why exactly. Yeah, it gets you to some weird thinking places, which I suppose is a good thing. Oddly enough, I, I felt that, but it wasn't quite on the same wave, same wavelength as, uh, like, the end, like, the only real feeling I have of, like, being drained and feeling, like, introspective and just, like, wow, holy shit, was when I beat Bioshock Infinite for the first time. <laughs> You and me Wait, both. Wait, the only time, yeah. really? Well, me vicariously. Yeah, because I uh, that during that time he didn't have a PS4 or three, so yeah. So like, I'm going through bio. I'm sorry, I'm going through uh, Mass Effect for the first time right now. Yeah. I'm on two. I just started two. I'm not gonna look at the comments because I now I know people are just going to troll me. <laughs> like, don't play Mass Effect three. Actually, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed that you have up until now, completely remained ignorant of the end of Mass Effect 3. That's both impressive and also kind of terrifying. I remember an uproar. <laughs> and that's all you'll know about it up until the end. Much sound and furious. But I will say, the, the only the thing I'll say about the ending... The cried out and were suddenly silenced. I will say this about the ending. The only reason why people got mad about it was because they were listening to the hype built around the development team. If you avoided that, it won't be nearly as big as a letdown. Okay, great. And also, now I have you I to undersell know. it for me. I don't know. Which means I'll I like it even more. Even, <laughs> even if I had not heard the blatant over-promises of the dev team, it still would have pissed me off just based on the game itself. She says I shouldn't play the third. He says I should. 
I, you def- it's, it's like watching Alien 3 after watching Aliens. It's, just, it's not, no. no. You, you know in your heart that the canon continues, but in your heart of hearts, you know that series ended at 2. Well, considering that he's going to get, like, the the revised canon ending to Mass Effect 3, he won't see it's the original, original barely, ending. It's barely anything. Barely anything. Well, well here's the thing. My uh, Victoria Shepard is so awesome, I think that she's going to pull through and look awesome no matter what happens. Well, there you are. Because <laughs> that's the character I make. <laughs> Victoria Shepard, huh? Renegade no, forever. So, so Except for uh, certain you, you times when you need to romance uh, certain people. You <laughs> then you're a paragon. You, you're you're done. <laughs> Renegade in the street, mm-hmm. paragon in the bed. That means that I'm a softie in the bed, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Renegade in the you streets, see, paragon in the sheets. You soft in bed, huh? Yeah. You know they got pills for that. Well, no, well, not when you're a female Not shepherd. when you're a female shepherd. <laughs> oh, you were just bearing your own show. But you're supposed to be soft if you're a female. Oh, yeah. then I'm doing good. <laughs> da, 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 da. Wow. Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, <laughs> try the wings. Well, can we actually, let's talk a little bit more about the performances. Because yeah. I think we kind of glossed over yeah. a lot of the Yeah, uh, the we should act- probably try and wrap it up, though, because I don't think we're going to top that. <laughs> like... We we hinted at the uh, some of the actors in this movie, including Kevin Spacey, which you know, like even when um, even when like the ending kind of castrated his character a bit, I still felt that he <laughs> was <laughs> what <laughs> castrated his character a little bit, just a wee bit. <laughs> that guy got it worse than anyone in the movie. Well, I mean, when I, he was finally trying to do something good, <laughs> like when like. They were trying to build up some menace and you, some... You knew he couldn't get out of that movie alive, though. Like, you knew. You knew he couldn't. He, I knew he couldn't get out of that movie alive, but when you're trying to build up the menace of the character and then you reveal him to be like, ah, oh, look at that face. Yeah. You better you, you better fuck that face he after I help you. He got it like canon film style. It, with, with, <laughs> his head exploded under the tire when they rolled back over. Like, he got it He got it Death Wish style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that well, was... That was You're crazy. such a reaction kind, a reactionary kind of person in the theater. It's great. I, I it's am. Great. I, I know. By I the, know. You've you've had to deal with me enough. I'm always. <gasps> By the way, I like the fact that I try to qualify qualify bit of a castration. Like there's only like you can castrate some of the testicles. You you, you could go full whole hog, as it were. Either you know, it's just like you either don't or you do. You're thinking of the metal song, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but. But aside from Kevin Spacey, I do like uh, I did like Jamie Foxx, even though he played the perfect asshole in a way that I just felt... okay. You you liked his performance. I, I liked his yeah. performance. You hate the character, you love the performance. Yeah. I oh I'm sorry. I'm kind of yeah. I'm sorry. I can't take Jamie Foxx seriously, as as mm. someone as menacing as that character had to be. I don't buy it. That's a good However, point. he was not as terrible as I was fearing he would be. No, like John Hamm was the real villain of the story. <clears throat> <laughs> and that's where, I, that's where, that's the only swerve of the story that I liked. I was expecting Jamie Foxx to just, you know, be like a reverse Django and just take out a whip and just like, fucking, like, Drow! I hate this fucking kid who thinks he's better than everyone else. But no, it's John Hamm that just comes out of nowhere and says, like, you, your incompetence and your bullshit in this cost me my, the love of my life. I am going to ruin the fuck out of you. That is one thing that did piss me off, especially, is that once they established how much those two were in love, you knew she was gonna die. Yeah, I oh, knew she was yeah, gonna I, die. You knew. One of and the, that pissed me off. That's why I was so sure that yeah. she was gonna bite it when that rail went through Jamie Foxx. Yeah, like, and I thought, I thought by the end he was going to. I, I thought Jamie Foxx was going to kill her, and then like, like there was going to be a death. He just didn't know how. But when like shit goes sideways, and then she gets plugged by the cops. Very unceremoniously. Which I think was better. Yeah. Honestly. Because yeah. Like... For, yeah. But still, still, it just kind of pissed me off just a little bit. It was like, oh, it was, just, it was so predictable. Like, it would have really <laughs> swerved us more if it, like, turned out that Jamie Foxx and uh, John Hamm mm-hmm. were actually, like, secretly in love. <laughs> Not secretly then... in love, but, like, secretly plotting to kill both her and Babyface make off with the loot, or something like that. Secretly something in love. that wouldn't have been so aggravating. So secretly in love. And and tired and tired not everything can be Swiss Army, man. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then Jamie Foxx is like, you killed that! You killed John Hamm! No! <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! 
I mean, when when John Hamm and his wife, I, I don't remember the characters' names, I'm just going to call him John Hamm and his wife, have neck tattoos that says his and hers, oh, respectively, yeah. like towels yeah. on a towel rack. Yeah. Oh, and we forgot to mention the everything. one character that you were so, that you, you were uh, sad the most to lose, uh, that's Hat Man. Hat Man, yeah. I, I, I will never, there's, that was there's your biggest hilarious. It, it didn't help he was Asian, so like you have lost the extra. Another fucking trope that I wish would just fucking go away. But mm. yeah, it, it was um, a fucking brilliant line of this adorable, dim-witted, but adorable nonetheless Asian thug that they had brought on on one of the heists. He and was their former car driver and he wasn't good enough, so they had to switch to uh, Baby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and during the one of oh, the many oh uh, racism, Joe, uh, racism. Okay, no, no. you, you should you're be ashamed fired. of yourself. You're fired. Uh, but right. uh, he had a neck tattoo that had H A T and then a giant black splotch, and they call attention to it. And he's like, he used to say, "Hey, but it, you know, I could, I had trouble finding work, so I, I had the ear moved." And he goes, well, "Yeah, but why does it just say hat? Who doesn't love hats?" <laughs> I, I, it was really hard for me to keep it together in the theater. <laughs> it was just... That one really got your funny bone. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, I like the character. I was kind of confused why they got rid of him so quickly. So quickly, yeah, and out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, he fucked up because he, he left a gun behind, didn't he? Yeah, he left But he a... was wearing gloves. It's not like he... Oh, it just hit me because um, of the fact that... Uh, Kaiser Soze, like, yeah. he got, probably could trace the gun back to him because of his, uh, connection, with, connection the cops. with the cops. Yeah. Didn't think about that. Yep, yeah, mm-hmm. He left a gun behind, so he had to, he had to kill him and, you know, dump his body. I know, but it, that did hurt. Yeah, it, it, it did it, hurt to lose the hat guy. Yeah, yeah. and although, like which actually hat. leads me brilliantly to one of the best jokes in, I, here's, now, here's the thing. I know Edgar Wright is the kind of person to make this joke. But I'm not sure, like, like, am I over? Am I out thinking Edgar Wright? Do I feel? Do I have the balls to call out Edgar Wright for this joke? But just what was the joke? So after that scene, like, he takes the the, the a car with the with the Asian guy's body in the trunk and has it compressed. Was he though? Because I, I would have assumed that he got rid of it. Well, he he dumped the car. Well, either way, he dumped the car that had that had his body in it. And what's the song that's playing? I'm easy like Sunday morning. Now, yeah. what was the scene, like, what was the scene in, um, like, the previous bank robbing scene? What was the, what were they wearing? They were wearing Mike Myers masks. Mm -hmm. They were wearing Austin Powers masks, but there was Because a, the Asian guy was an idiot. The Asian guy was an idiot, and he thought, like, Mike Myers, oh, Austin Powers. No, Michael Myers from Halloween. So they, you know, there's a funny little gag. He's like, oh, he got the mistake. But then I remember, wait a minute. <laughs> Wasn't wasn't that the song that, that Mike Myers was swinging to in Cat in the Hat? I'm easy like Sunday morning. Oh God damn it! So oh. I didn't see that. So in Cat in the Hat, there was a scene where you he, really think that's intentional? That was an intentional callback. I either I'm making a connection that isn't there, but let's face it, Edgar Wright is the kind of person to make those. Are kind you of, out Edgaring Edgar? I think I'm out Edgaring Edgar at this moment because I immediately thought like, wait a minute, like you just had a Mike Myers joke, and then you used a song in a Mike Myers movie. Where the entire joke is the song. Hmm. It's possible. It's quite possible. They did have a list of, like, film credits. You know, thanks for whatever. Because they had a lot of callbacks and references in the movie. Like Quentin Tarantino was thanked in the credits? They, yeah. They had uh, lots of other movies that they showed brief glimpses of or made references back to. And now I want to see if maybe Cat in the Hat was on that list. Because it was a big list and I, I didn't see the I wouldn't necessarily past. Like, I wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. think that they would uh, put him in the... The, the thank you credits, but I will I say, like, to think you, I still say you might be looking a bit too I'm, much into that. I, I, that's where I, that's my thought process. That was, I'm not saying this was an intentional joke, that's why I qualified it with saying I'm not quite sure Edgar Wright intended for that, or if that was just a real happy coincidence that I just like, hey, that song was also used in this Mike Myers movie, and you just made a Mike Myers joke. Just... It's almost like it's a famous song that they use in a whole bunch of different things. You're, you're going to get the gold and take it in the mail from Edgar tomorrow. It's like, like, you, you noticed, got it. You noticed. Like, he's going to show up at my door. In a, yeah. Like, he's going to show up at my door like Willy Wonka. Exactly. It's like, exactly. I've tried so many times to find somebody who can understand movie making the way I do. And now I've found him. And he starts leaning down, but I'm as tall as him, so he's on stilts. So that way he'd still lean down to me. Ooh, like, we're getting a but real remember, close Bennett, look into your fantasy. Remember, yeah, Bennett. Yeah, it's pretty specific. You're it. Don't forget whatever happened. Don't forget what happened to the one moviegoer who thought he was smarter than the director. What happened? <laughs> he was an asshole. 
and then he punches me in the face and he just <laughs> fucking runs off. Oh, oh it's still somewhere. <laughs> 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 Bed's fancies. That that you stay with me long enough, and these flights of fancies Why? become regular. <laughs> yeah. Why do I? What incentive do I possibly what have? What incentive do, have I? I had? make life worth living. Without me, you might as well be eating gruel for sustenance. Life with me is a five-course meal. I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> You've known me for how long, Gabe? Too long. Life before me, you were like Oliver Twist, waiting in line for your gruel. I like some more, please. More. And then life with me, you're like one of the Lost Boys, and you're eating cartoon <laughs> rainbow sludge. Not, not helping. Moving it, moving it, moving it, and moving it, and we're back. So final thoughts. Final thoughts. A movie that I respect and admire oh. more than I like, and I I know I say that. A few more times than your average person, and believe me, I'm no one's more aware of it than I am. But at the I end am. of the day, I still gotta be honest. I am. <laughs> I am. Um, it's a good Iron movie. Man. I am Iron Man. I am Iron Man. <laughs> I am Iron Man. <laughs> Excuse me, I was at the cleaners and I was looking for this ironing man. Uh yeah, it was a good movie. It had problems story-wise. It was a little easy to predict. Um, it's it was fun. It was good. It was a little long. Uh, I mean, like there were parts. In other words, there were there were parts that they could have kind of cleaned up a little, made a little faster, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, other than that, great fun movie. Uh, loud in your face. It was a fun action movie, and I passing think... it to Amy. <laughs> also, Flea was in it. I think that's important to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Wait, what? Flea was in it. Really? Yeah, he what was. What part did he play? Like he was the guy with the the fucked up nose, right next to the Asian guy. Oh shit! I was trying to pinpoint like where have I seen that? No, like that was Flea. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! I never even noticed. It. Oh, yes. See so they, this movie. Yeah, that was uh, the basis for Red Hot Chili Peppers. Movie. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, really. Like really. <sighs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes, go see I'm this sorry movie. That, that hit a I, we're not talking. We're okay. We're not going there right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. Early '90s kid right here. So, well, I mean, aren't we all three basically? I guess because we. Were yes. There. Well, I, 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 I wasn't going to reveal her age. <laughs> I mean, you just did. You said early '90s. Well, I was always told to believe that it's very rude to reveal a lady's age. I no, you just did that. You said early kid. '90s kid. Early '90s kid, but like yeah. you were like three or four. She was like. Six or seven? See, now you're revealing the age, though. That's... I know! Like, now you're digging us a deeper hole. You dug it! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> There's nothing left to see. Just, just click off the video now. This is... We're fucking idiots. Aren't we all glad that we're idiots? Shut up! 